we're back on the roof. So we got this uh, AC number six is not functional. So this is a weird one. So it does all these middle rooms right here. Okay, but then it also does that side too, which is a completely different company, which is really weird. So they have the thermostat over there and we have one sensor in there. And this room is hot as heck because they have a lot of equipment that puts off heat. And then they have to close the doors for what they do. So it gets really hot in there. They just put these new, uh, these new windows in there. They're supposed to be high efficiency windows, which I sure they are, but I shot them from the inside and they're like 83 degrees of radiant heat coming in. If I shoot it on here, it's 104. So it is blocking quite a bit of heat going from going in there. Probably be a lot hotter if it wasn't. Uh, so it is doing its job, but anyway, right now it's calling for cool. So I'm gonna verify it's calling for cool, but as you can see, it's not actually cooling. It's not doing anything. Um, it sounds like the uh, blower motor is running, but that's about it. So we're gonna verify we're receiving the call for cooling and then uh, we'll go from there. So here we go. All right, so we got her opened up. We're gonna go ahead and start with a visual inspection. So the contactor is not closed. This contactor is closed, but I think that controls the blower motor. Uh, we know the blower motor is running. Somebody went crazy with the turbos. And now we want to see if we're receiving a call for cooling, which we're going to check between C and Y, 1. So we do have our call. So we got to find out why it's not doing anything. Let's see if this has a economizer. We may have a problem with our economizer. Okay, it looks like we might have an economizer. Oh, and it has an exhaust. Let's see if that economizer, maybe for some reason it's economizing because I was getting about 80 degrees of air coming out of the supply. So we'll see what's up. So the economizer appears to be closed. All right, so that's our temperature sensor. Uh, so we want to go ahead and make sure that this thing is doing what it's supposed to. It's basically a Honeywell unit. They just put stuck a carrier thing on it. So first things first, we want to see if we're getting 24 volts to the economizer controller. So let's do that. Yeah, so this is, uh, so we're gonna go ahead and check. So TR1 is basically common. So we're gonna check one. So we have 26 volts. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and check, I think that's six or four, no, this is four, yeah. So we have 26 volts, 26 volts. All right, so we have 24 volts going in and 24 volts coming out. So economizer's fine. All right, so we're looking at the um, thermostat. So we know we have 24 volts going into the economizer, coming out of the economizer, but it's not getting to our contactor. So if we look here, we have, uh, where is it? We have Y1, which is gonna be a blue wire, right? So that's that's this one. So this blue wire, where, where am I at? Right here, runs down, okay? I'm not sure if I'm filming this, I hope I am. And then it goes into this connector, all right? Now that connector, goes into the economizer right and it comes back out right here which is a gray wire okay so here's our here's our gray wire okay so our gray wire runs out here and there's a connection point right here and it connects to a black wire so as you can see here here's our gray going into our black so our black our gray to black goes into a high pressure then we have a black which makes a connection to another black which goes into our uh, FPT, which is a, um, a freeze freeze up protection thermostat. Okay, and that's going to be in there. Then it's going to go from black to blue, hits our low pressure switch, then blue into our contactor. Okay, so this is our high pressure going in, and then coming back out, going into there. So we want to check continuity between here and here. If we don't have it, that means one of the pressure switches is tripped. Yeah. Or, or it could be the uh, freeze protection. But not all of these have that, so that might not even exist, but it could. So we need to see if this circuit is actually open or not. So let's do that. So I know I talk a lot of crap about engineers, but this old carrier unit, look at this. It has a hole here with a little cap that you can put back on. You know what the hole's there? Let's put your hoses on. That way when you're diagnosing this thing, you can put this panel back on because if, if I were to run this thing without this panel on, it's just gonna suck air through here. It's gonna bypass the coil and I'm not gonna get accurate readings. But an engineer actually thought about that and put a hole there with a little cap. The new carriers don't have that. I don't know why. Well, actually I do know why because 
now all their condensers are on top but yeah but this was a great idea i don't know why more manufacturers don't do this that that's just like it's a hole with a plastic cover so when i'm done i can pop this cover back on and it doesn't suck air through that hole that's awesome so anyway we're all set up we got our discharge line we got our suction line we got all our clamps hooked up we're going to put the panel on and we'll go ahead and cycle it on and see if it does anything but this is what our pressures are right now so it's about uh i don't even know how hot it is right now but it's probably like 80s so yeah so i think the charge might be fine we might have a bad sensor or something i'm gonna see if i can find that uh free stat if there is one and then uh, we'll go from there well i don't know if you can see that um, right there in that corner over there right there where my finger is there's a stat back there or a free stat back there so yeah um belt looks okay so yeah anyway uh we're gonna go ahead and reconnect everything we're gonna try to cycle it uh, what we'll probably end up do is bypass the whole safety circuit and see if I can get it to run that way and just see what the pressures do. Because uh, it could also be, you know, a high pressure situation and maybe the, uh, maybe the, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, the high pressure switch got stuck. Who knows? Or we could have high pressure, well, no, our pressures seem to be normal, so it's probably a high pressure situation. Maybe, uh, maybe our condenser fan motor failed. Uh, we don't know, but let's see. We'll try to cycle it and get it going and see what's not working and go from there. All right, so I'm jumping R to uh, Y1 and nothing's happening. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump from Y1 straight to the contactor. So that's gonna be our 24 volt side. That's our common, so yeah. So be careful when you do this because you're doing it live. Um, but basically we're gonna bypass the safety circuit because I wanna see what's not working. Uh, but I wanna be able to let it run for a little bit. And then if anything goes crazy, I can just flip that. So, here we go. Put one there carefully. All right. And then we want to go ahead and carefully stick one on Y1. Here we go. All right. So everything's turning on. So we got 35 on our suction. 218, but... Up. It is R22, so when it first turns on, it dips down and comes back up. So we'll let it run for a little bit and see what's going on. But we might have a faulty uh, pressure switch somewhere. So we're going to let it run for a little bit and see what it does once it stabilizes. So let's take a look here. Our condenser fan motor is at 1.4 amps, so that's good. Uh, compressor at 25 amps. I think that's normal for this unit. Uh, our pressures seem to have calmed down. So 67 on our low side, 220 or 239 on our high. It's 85 degrees outside. Keep in mind that's a discharge, so it's always a little bit higher. So if we look at our subcool reading, that's totally wrong. Superheat's at 4.4. Five degrees of superheat is usually pretty good, five to ten. I think our charge is fine. We don't have a low pressure situation or a high pressure situation. So I'm thinking one of these switches has failed or is not working. So now we got to isolate it and figure out exactly which one's the problem. Fun, fun, fun. So we got three possibles. There's a low pressure, a high pressure, and then a, a what do you call it? A uh, um, freeze stack. So we got to be able to, we got to find these wires and isolate them. All right, so I've isolated this. So these go directly to our low pressure switch. So we're gonna check that. Uh, and then I gotta find the two blues, which is our high pressure. And then the two blacks going over there is gonna be our, our uh, free stat. So let me go ahead and get this set up because I can't do it one handed. Okay, so our low pressure switch is open. So, all right. So that could be our culprit. So we're gonna check the other ones and just make sure that they're not tripped too. If they are, we'll just take this one out of the circuit and go from there. Because we definitely know it's not a low pressure situation for sure. Okay, so now the blue wire is our high pressure switch. And as you can see, we have continuity. So our low pressure switch is the culprit, okay? Okay, so we're gonna start from this point. So this goes to high pressure. High pressure comes back, goes into defrost or, or uh, what do you call it, Fr freeze stat. Free stat goes into free stat, comes back, and then goes back into gray, 
which goes to economizer, which comes connects to blue and then goes to Y. So these two wires here are our low pressure switch. So they are now out of the circuit. All right. So now when I cycle this, I'm jumping uh, R to Y contactor should close if I have this wired properly. So yeah, here we go. Fire in the hole. Yep, there she goes. All right, cool. So we'll come back with a low pressure switch to install and we'll put it back in the circuit. Sweet. The question is, is why did we have, uh, why did our low pressure switch trip? So for some reason it tripped and uh, just got stuck and never reset. And of course it's brazed in there. So it's not an easy replacement. So more, more than likely we'll get one, screw it into here and put a T. So anyway, hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook. Thanks for watching.